Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry, guys. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. I'm here to do a video. We couldn't do it Sunday. I mean, Sunday. We couldn't do it Sabbath. Something happened with the electronics. And we are on some new software, as you probably can see. So uh, bear with us here. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, this message has to go forth. So today we're going to go back to 1 King 13th chapter. And then I'm going to be reading from uh, Byron Searle, new message from last night. The door is shut in. Absolutely. The door is shut in. And then I'm going to go and end this with Satan personates Christ coming from Maranatha. The Lord is coming. Uh, Ellen G. White, um, page 206. Uh, if I get the electronic man to read it, it'll be July 17th. Uh, if I get him to read it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, pray before we do this uh, First Kings. But I've been looking at the news all this weekend. A lot of people are looking at Passover coming. A lot of people are talking about we can have a flyby. I think I was listening to uh, Minister Paul last night. And Minister Paul was talking about something about a flyby uh troubles coming. We know we're having all this strange weather. I told you yesterday how the snow tornadoes was coming in New Mexico. We got floods in Tennessee. We have just all kind of bad weather, things that we never seen before in our life happening. So we need to be really getting our ship in order. That's why I'm going to go and read uh, his message, The Door is Short, The Door is Shutting. So right now we're going to go over and read First Kings and kind of go through it. And I'm going to preach through it and talk through it, whatever. But we need to understand, we need to be really listening to the Father right now. We need to stop listening to men. Stop listening to presidents, uh, priests, kings, prophets, whatever. You need to have a voice from the Yeshua HaMashiach on your own. You need to have a relationship with him. You need to be walking and talking with him and understanding what he would have you to do right now. That's the most important thing right now, people, to give your life to Yeshua HaMashiach uh, because time is running out. Time is running out. So, honey, you can go ahead and read uh, beginning of the First Kings 13, 1. And, Father, be with us as we read this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Let your Holy Spirit read through us, talk through us, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. So go ahead and, yeah. Um, I'll try. Let's see if my voice holds up. A man of the Almighty came out of Judah by the word of Yahuwah to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar to burn incense. He cried against the altar by the word of Yahuwah. Altar, altar, this is what Yahuwah says. See, a, a son named Josiah will be born to the family of David, and on you he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who now burn incense on you. On you they will burn human bones. Then the man of the Almighty gave a sign the same day, saying, this is the sign that Yahuwah has spoken. Look, the altar will be split apart, and the ashes on it will be poured out. Whew. When the king heard what the man of the Almighty said, that he had cried out against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam, or Jeroboam reached out his, with his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! Then the hand with which he had reached out against the man dried up, so he could not draw it back to himself. The altar was also split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar, as described by the sign that the man of the Almighty had given by the word of Yahuwah. King Jeroboam answered and said to the man of the Almighty, Plead for the favor of Yahuwah, your Almighty, and pray for me, so that my hand may be restored to me again. So the man of the Almighty prayed to Yahuwah, and the king's hand was restored to him again, and it became as it was before. Okay, stop here and talk a bit. What happened here? You see what happened here? <clears throat> And I've been uh, looking at that. Uh, I was listening to a guy the other day on another channel. He was talking about how somebody was praying for this man over in Pakistan, I think it was. And they needed to get him to the hospital because he was having some kind of problems with a, he might have a kidney stone. I don't know what it was. When are we going to learn to call on Yeshua before we call on doctors, before we run to the hospital? Before we, you know, I'm not saying you need to run to the, if my leg break, I probably run and let them fix it maybe. And maybe, you know, but I'm just saying we need to really start trusting Yeshua to heal, to do supernatural healings. You see the man, he called on him to do his hand he, and he, God healed it. 
But we don't call on Yeshua first. We like to run to the doctor. Oh, we panic. We, you know, we don't just panic and call on him. We need to call on him. Call on him. The day is here, people. The door is shutting. This is the time to get ready for miracles. I heard another brother talk about these miracles are coming. I think, uh, I don't know if it was Minister Paul or somebody else. But I know that these miracles are going to be coming for God's people. We're not going to have no hospitals. We're not going to have doctors to run to. We're not going to have these things, these conveniences. We need to know that Yeshua is our convenience and we need to be calling on Father. Father, touch me. I know the other day I was having a pain in my chest right up here, right? I mean, in the car, we was out Friday, I think it was. And I just say, Father, I rebuke that pain right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Touch me now. And I say, he is my healer. With his stripes, I am healed, body. And then after I said that, it, it just, it ain't been back yet. It haven't been back since. So you guys need to learn to call on the father. I'm just, that's a good indicator right there. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead. Verse seven, the king said to the man of the almighty, come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. The man of the almighty said to the king, even if you give me half your possessions, I will not go with you, nor will I eat food or drink water in this place. Because Yahuwah commanded me by his word, you will eat no bread, nor drink water, nor return by the way that you came. Okay, hold on. You remember that, I don't know back in the old days. I'm just going back when I was a child growing up. And my grandmother used to always tell us, she sometimes would pat our hand like that and tell us, if we go to people's house and we grab him for something like that. You know, I know when we was little, three and four years old, five years old, uh, grab him for something at people's house. And she was like, and then she'll say, don't you ever eat from strangers. Don't you ever eat from people. If I didn't give it to you, you don't eat it. And you see, Yeshua is the same way. He's trying to protect this man. You're going to see later on. But you know, Yeshua always, we always had these trainings when we were back in the day. I don't know about today. You know, people just doing everything to their kids today. Oh my goodness. Giving them marijuana, giving them this, giving them that. Uh, don't care whether they were walking down the street or not. You know, we, we need to really be a little more careful. Like our grandparents were in the old back in the day. And I'm telling you, we did not eat with strangers. We could not eat at people's house. We had to eat only when we, when grandmothers serve us or family members serve us. And so this is just going to tell you, it's not nothing new under the sun. People been doing this for ages and decades. And Yeshua have been telling us too. I know when I used to work at this nursing when i was a certified nurse assistant i was working over at the uh, this uh catholic uh uh facility facility and i was just minding my own business and one day the lord led me to a scripture to read and i can't even find it now but he was telling me in the scripture do not eat with these people take your own lunch when you go pack a lunch and take your own food and he was telling me not to eat with them because they offer their food up to idols and I was like, wow. And that was the first time I ever seen that. And when I went over to that place that day, that whole week, I worked on that assignment. I think two weeks, three weeks. I don't know. I took my lunch every day because the father told me not to eat with these people. And he's telling this man the same thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> so the man of the almighty left another way and did not return to his home by the way that he had come to Bethel. Now there was an old prophet living in Bethel. And one of his sons came and told him all the things that the man of the Almighty had done that day in Bethel. His sons also told him the words that the man of the Almighty had spoken to the king. Their father said to them, Which way did he go? Now his sons had seen the way the man of the Almighty from Judah had gone. So he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey, and he rode off on it. The old prophet went after the man of the Almighty and found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said to him, are you the man of the Almighty who came from Judah? He answered, I am. Then the old prophet said to him, Come home with me and eat food. The man of the Almighty answered, I, I may not return with you nor go in with you, neither will I eat food nor drink water with you in this place, because it was commanded to me by the word of Yahuwah, you will eat no food nor drink water there, nor return by the way that you came. So the old prophet said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat food and drink water. But he was lying to the man of the Almighty. So the man of the Almighty went back with the old prophet and ate food in his house and drank water. 
As they sat at the table, the word of Yahuwah came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of the Almighty who came from Judah, saying, Yahuwah says, Because you have been disobedient to the word of Yahuwah, and have not kept the command that Yahuwah your Almighty gave you, but came back and have eaten food and drunk water in the place about which Yahuwah told you to eat no food and drink no water, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your fathers. After he had eaten food and after he had drunk, the prophet saddled the donkey of the man of the Almighty, the man who had come back with him. Okay. Well, see, that's what happened. He disobeyed. He disobeyed. Okay, go ahead. When the man of the Almighty was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his body was left on the road. Then the donkey stood by it, and the lion also stood by the body. When men passed by and saw the body left on the road, and the lion standing by the body, they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of the Almighty who disobeyed the word of Yahuwah. Therefore Yahuwah gave him to the lion, which tore him to pieces and killed him, just as the word of Yahuwah warned him. So the old prophet spoke to his son, saying, Saddle my donkey, and they saddled it. He went and found the body left in the road, and the donkey and the lion standing by the body. The lion had not eaten the body, nor attacked the donkey. The prophet took up the body of the man of the Almighty, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. He came to his own city to mourn and to bury him. He laid the body in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Woe, my brother! Then after he had buried him, the old prophet spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, bury me in the tomb in which the man of the Almighty is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the message he declared by the word of Yahuwah against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses on the high places in the cities of Samaria will certainly happen. After this, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but continued to appoint profane priests for the high places from among all sorts of people, and any who would serve he consecrated as a priest. This matter became sin to the family of Jeroboam and caused his family to be destroyed and to be exterminated from the face of the earth. Wow. You see what you see what disobedience can do to you. As they always used to say in the Bible, or some I hear a lot of old people said too, it's better to be obedient. It's better to obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what they like to say. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You can try to uh uh you know, like in the Bible back in the day and uh in, in um uh, the two brothers, uh Cain and Abel. And I'll never forget uh Cain uh wanted to bring Yeshua uh, uh, you know, his offerings, what he wanted to bring, fruit and stuff like that. And Yahweh has specified a certain offering to bring. And uh, Abel would bring the right one, but Cain didn't want to bring it. And see, you know, that's what that's what I mean. We cannot be trying to uh, compromise with Yeshua. If he tell us to do something, we need to do it, people. Do it. I know sometimes he tell me to do things that sound stupid and, and crazy to do. I mean, I some I told you I go out and meet these strange people all the time. He tell me you're gonna meet this person. He wearing this. He wearing that. And sometimes I get a little shuttled because they, one of the people might be with a husband or wife, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And the devil trying to get me out of it, talk me out of it. But you know, I have to obey. And when I don't obey, I just feel so bad for weeks at a time. I feel so bad I'm, if I miss a assignment or anything, miss a mission. Uh, we need to learn to be obedient because we're going to come a ta day when it's going to it's going to be a life, a death, a life, a death, life, a death, like the lion life, a death people. And that's why I tell you guys on my channel it's so important. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how many jobs you got. I don't care what entertainments you're into, recreations you're into. Uh, you know, people make all these excuses, you know, um, but if you're sure is trying to talk to you and get you to do an assignment. I just got a word from Leonard, actually, and told you Leonard was uh, sick here not long ago. We had to send money for him to get medicine for uh, what's that? M malaria, malaria. And uh, he told me the other day, just a few days ago, uh, Friday, I think it was, he said, Marna, I was praying, and the Father told me, I heard the Father speaking to me in the Holy Spirit, and he told me I need to focus on feeding his sheep feeding his sheep and nothing else. 
And you know, that's what I'm talking about. If you have a calling on your life and you're trying to do a business and you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that, you better make sure Yeshua wants you to do a business. And he may not want you to do a business. He may want you just to do his ministry. He may just want you to do feed my sheep. You know, like he told Leonard, feed my sheep. Cause I know they having really hard times over there in Africa and they need money for all kinds of things. Like Americans need money for all kinds of things too. But when Yeshua got a calling on your life, and I'm telling you, this man has a calling on his life. He, he can go out and put his hand on the sick and they'd be delivered. And, and all kind of miracles happen when Leonard do his ministries. And also, uh, my friend, I don't have the picture to show you on the screen now. I'll show you on another mission report. I just got pictures from Joseph over uh, at a certain congregation uh, giving Bibles and putting hands on people and delivering them. And you know, when you got a calling, you need to do your calling. You know, I, I was like, I had a person tell me that who wasn't even, didn't even know he was telling me that. I told you, I did this video with this rich guy and he just saying, I was asking him a question. And then I told him, I said, uh, oh, if, but if it's wrong for a person to be, if they want to do a business and, and, and they got a calling and they can do a business. And he said, no, if he's, and he said to me, he said, if a person got a calling on their life, they need to do the calling. And I'm telling you, it was, he was talking to me and he didn't even know he was talking to me. So you need to do your calling if you got a calling. I'm telling you, it's so urgently important, especially in these end times. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop doubting God. Start trusting him in all things. Our mind, our bodies, our souls, everything about us, we need to trust Yeshua for it right now because the door is shutting. And I'm going to go there now. Uh, how do I get there? I want my screen uh, for... Oh, right there? Okay. I see my screen. All right. Oh, wow. How am I going to do that? Just drag the link right there down. You do it. I don't want to mess this thing up. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to have to read this, people. So that may, might see part of me. How much you got to read? All of it? Now. Yeah. I go back to the top. Okay. This is coming from Brian Searle. The door is shut in. The door is shut in, okay? Last night, Luke 13, 24 to 30. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and have shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou have taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God and behold there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last and that made me think about something I, I made me think about uh this uh, I was still talking on you the other day about the Gentiles last night and you know the Gentiles time is about up absolutely Okay, so it says here, my son, write into the people who try to enter in, but are not able. Many will try to enter my kingdom by great flatteries and smooth words. They will preach a gospel that sounds good. And those who do not read my word will be deceived. They will pray for the sick and cast out demons in my name. Yet when they come to me, I will say unto them, I knew you not. Once the master shuts the door, that is the end. I shut the door on Noah's ark and it could not be opened. Those people had 120 years to come to me through Noah's preaching, but all they did was scoff and ridicule him. But when the floods came, all the people clawed at the great door. That's right. Let me in, let me in, let me in. My son, it is as it was in Noah's day. Sin is rampant. Murder is commonplace. People are eating, drinking, and giving in marriage. The people today scoff and ridicule my people. And when I gather mine unto me, the end will commence. Many will think, why am I left behind? 
and they will experience what the people in Noah's day felt like. But my son, this time there, this time there is hope for I will not remove my spirit from the earth during the time of trouble. Many will come to me at a great cost, but many will also turn away and curse me. Just let me finish reading it, honey. Okay. Uh, I guess you're turning it around. Uh, let me see. Where am I? Curse me right there. The time of the gathering is near. Tell my people to keep peer before me. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many will try to sneak around in a, another way. <laughs> in another way. Ain't no other way. It's not another way. You know, I, I think Oprah was saying it's a thousand ways to the kingdom. No, it ain't but one way. One way. One way, people. That's why you need to seek Yeshua's face and find him while you can find him. Okay, it's time to come aboard the ark. It's time to come. It says here, um, my son, I say, come and dine at the master's table and eat of the bread I give. I love you, my people. Keep your eyes focused on me during these last days. I am coming so soon and suddenly it would take the entire world by surprise. Stay in my word. Stay on your knees in prayer. Seek me with all your heart. I say to those sitting in the gate waiting for something to happen, repent now. Turn from your evil ways and come follow me. The door is shutting. Don't be left out and left behind. Amen. Messiah Jesus. And so I'm going to end this by going, I think I'm just going to read this today myself because I want to probably express a little better, a little points here. Coming from here, not the Lord is coming. Uh, I read this before, I think, but I'm going to read it again on page 206, July 17. Satan personates Christ too, okay? And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, Satan is preparing his deceptions that in his last campaign against the people of God, they may not understand that it is he and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan will go to the extent of his power to harass and tempt and mislead God's people. He who dared to face and tempt and taunt our Lord and who had power to take him in his arms and carry him to a pentacle of the temple and up unto an exceeding high mountain will exercise his power to a wonderful decree upon the present generation who are far inferior in wisdom to their Lord and who are almost wholly ignorant of his subsidy and strength. In a marvelous manner, in a marvelous manner, Will he affect the bodies of those who are naturally inclined to do his bidding? He will come personating Jesus Christ. You people need to understand that. It's true. When the Antichrist comes, he's going to be like Christ. He's going to act like Christ, talk like Christ, walk like Christ, do miracles like Christ. I told you guys many times on my channel that he's not going to, the real Messiah will not touch his feet on the ground again. He won't be coming He'll be coming through the clouds with all his holy angels. And when he comes, he's going to get rewards. So you know when you see this person, it's not going to be Yeshua, okay? Not going to be Christ, okay? He will come personating Jesus Christ, working mighty miracles, and men will fall down and worship him as Jesus Christ. We shall be commanded to worship this being whom the world will glorify as Christ. What shall we do? Tell them that Christ has warned us against just such a foe. Absolutely. God have warned us about it. He have warned us just as a foe. Who is man's worst enemy yet who claims to be God and that when Christ shall make his appearance, it will be with power and great glory accompanied by 10,000 times 10,000 angels. There it is. And thousands of thousands. And that when he shall come, we shall know his voice. Hallelujah. You see how important it is to know his voice right now. Know his voice. The time is coming when Satan will work miracles right in your sight, claiming that he is Christ. And if your feet are not firmly established upon the truth of God, then you will be led away from your foundation. Satan is determined to keep up the warfare to the end. 
coming as an angel of light, claiming to be the Christ, he will deceive the world. But his triumph will be short. No storm or tempest can move those whose feet are planted on the principles of eternal truth. They will be able to stand in this time of almost universal apostasy. Universal apostasy, people. That's what's going to be happening. So we need to know Yeshua said it's remnant. He said he will have a remnant. He will have a remnant. So we should know better. We should know better. Okay. We should know the signs. We should know what to look for. So we need not to be deceived. We need not to be deceived. Okay. So I'm just going to end here today. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go up to my screen again. Uh, let's see here. Go to my screen again. I don't know. Okay. Uh, what is that? Okay. And so I just want to thank you guys for watching again today. And um, I'm going to be putting some things in the description box like I always do. What's up last night? Uh, got a message from a friend uh, in Florida last night about this uh, this stuff going on with the Pope right now. And so they saying now the Pope has been stripped of his powers uh, from some coroners or something like that. But I will put some things in the description box for you guys to look at. We know all these things are coming. I was given 1 Samuel 28 chapter this today. And when I got through reading it and I went on down and read where it's talked about uh, the unleavened bread, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's talking about the... Uh, uh, I'm not... Let me hold my Bible right there real quick. I'm going to just read one scripture. Real quick here, one one scripture from it. And you guys can go and look at it and read it if you get time. I may come back later and do another video on it. But uh first Samuel uh twenty-eight, twenty-eight chapter, and just just give you something to think about. But father is always talking to me this way, and it's late last night. And so if I go to first Samuel twenty-eight, verse one, it says, Now it happened. In those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. And that's what I'm just going to read there. And then when I read on down here to another verse, it talked about this lady making a meal. <clears throat> and it mentioned that she made a, uh, she got a fat calf and made a fat calf. And uh, here it is here at 24. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house and she hastened to kill it. And she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread from it. And that just got me, wow, okay. So I'm just saying we might be in a time of a lot of the prophets and messengers out there are talking about Passover, that we could be in the midst of a war, right, in Passover, people. That's what came to my mind. That's what I saw. And so we need to be praying. We need to stay prepared. I know a lot of people talk about the three days of darkness. A lot of people talk about that. Uh, Minister Paul thinking might something might hap happen tomorrow. I don't know the 26th here. I don't know. I'm just watching. I'm just praying. We just have to watch and pray. And I'm not citing times and dates, but we know that it's going to be something magnificent happen. We know something horrific is going to happen on this planet. It's going to shake America to her knees, shake the world to their knees. So we need to be just keeping ourselves before Yeshua right now, keeping our hearts and minds and souls before Yeshua. You have anything to say while I close? Nothing? No. Okay, because it's just it's just getting to be really crazy. And we need to know that a lot of the people who are, are scoffing God and mocking God and talking jokes and laughing and clowning, people partying and, you know, all they think about is just, oh, what I look like on Facebook, what I look like on, you know, all about all this fluff and folic and who cares about that stuff? You think I don't watch the I don't watch the awards. I don't watch that stuff. I don't watch Hollywood. I don't care about Hollywood. I don't care about this world. We're trying to get out of the world. We don't want to know about the world. We need to be just really focusing on Yeshua right now, people. I'm telling you. So thank you for watching. I know all your givings help many people worldwide for food, personal needs, equipment to help us continue this online ministry. When you give, you help missionaries win souls for the kingdom of Yahweh. We all need each other to help souls enter the kingdom. You will be blessed from all the Father. Thank you. Thank you. Give us for all your prayers and contributions. Uh, and Father, I just ask that you, uh, I'm going to let you end with a short prayer, people. Uh, I'm going to let him end with a short prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you. Thank you for this message today. Yeah. Thank you for your word. Yeah. Thank you for what you're showing oh, yeah. and revealing to your people, Father. Hmm. Protect all your people. We look forward to your return, Yeshua. Hmm. We look forward to the day you come and arrest the devil, Satan mm -hmm. himself, and throw him in the bottomless pit. We look for you to be established on your throne in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all our supporters and our viewers, mm -hmm. our partners. We love you all. Father, we want you to bless them. Each and every person out there, everybody that's in our prayer box, Father. Oh, we love them, Father. All our workers all over the world. Yes. You know, workers Hallelujah. working, 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 working. Father, they risk their lives. We risk our lives. We're all risking our lives now as this earth becomes a dangerous place to live until we see you face to face. And we just trust you to get us through to the end. In Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, people, we're going to go now. Well, you guys have a wonderful Monday. We'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Uh, I know some things I'm going to put in the description box. I mean, from... Uh, Lateral Rain 333 and some other people got some messages, so I will put them in the description box as well. So you guys have a wonderful Monday. Love you so much. Bye-bye. Shalom, shalom.